Breaking news followed by more breaking news. A new headline every second. Nowhere is the media market more competitive than in New York. To survive financially, media companies have to develop diverse strategies. 51-year-old public relations expert Jim Joseph writes a blog for the online newspaper The Huffington Post. While I might be giving my point of view, it's awesome to get their point of view back again. And then I learn from it and it gives me more to write about. So it becomes this cycle of learning and talking and dialoguing and applying that we never had before because you would just put an article out and it would stop. And now it keeps going and keeps living, which is, which is amazing. Thousands of other bloggers also write for the Huffington Post, but they can't live off their work. I'm not paid to write my articles. I do it as part of my work and as part of being a thought leader in the industry. So I don't get paid to write the article. I don't get paid to comment. I do it because I enjoy it and I like it and, and I like the interaction. Without the internet, even respected papers like the New York Times wouldn't have a future because its income is generated by clicks on advertising links. Gabriel Dance now works for the Guardian newspaper, but it was once his job to retain as many New York Times readers as possible using multimedia. Our ability to tell stories has gone from simply just print and photographs to interactives, to maps, to different types of um, games, to video, and and really to all of those forms combined. And I can use just my numbers on the keyboard. This is one of the computer games Dance invented for the New York Times. It addresses an issue found in articles in the paper. The dangers of writing text messages while driving. Would at least try it. One of the strengths is that it really engages a reader. Games is something in which they actively participate in. And as soon as you have one of your readers actually engaging with your content, um, it becomes much more easy to get them to care more about that content. Several New York companies specialize in developing computer games for media outlets. One of them is Games for Change. The most popular article on the New York Times in 2013 wasn't an article, it, it was an interactive quiz. So um, increasingly, you know, you're having people coming to these websites, they want something, you know, a little more interactive. I think it's a little more interesting. Um, and games, I mean, I think are seeing a bump in, in popularity across, across all demographics. And the companies benefit too. Demand is growing for games that deal with socially relevant issues. So this is Half the Sky Movement, the game. It's a point-and-click adventure game on Facebook um, about fighting the oppression of women worldwide. It's based on a best-selling book of the same name that was written by a New York Times journalist. Gabrielle Dance still considers himself a journalist. He knows that the internet is setting new standards of journalism. Journalists have to inform, entertain, and carry on a lively dialogue with readers. As soon as the more traditional journalists see that we're in fact complementing their journalism with something that they couldn't do on their own, it starts to make them, I feel, get much more excited and encouraged about collaboration and the future of their storytelling because they find they're just re reaching a wider audience. The media market in New York and elsewhere will remain highly competitive. Publishers and other media outlets have to constantly change in order to survive.